On the 20th of March, Napoleon Bonaparte declared himself Emperor of France. Many years later, on the same date, the 20th of March 1978, I started my career as an apprentice chef at the Hotel St George in Harrogate. My position was in the larder. Every morning I was in charge of making the buffet for the hotel guests. The new potatoes from the night before were turned into a potato salad. The French beans were turned into a salad niçoise and the ratatouille was served cold, no wastage. And then the only thing we really made, apart from the obvious, used to make piperad. It wasn't a great piperad, it was too wet. It didn't have the intensity of flavor. It didn't have the texture which is required. So what I'm gonna do next is give you a little insight into how I make piperad, not like the Hotel St. George all those years ago. So we'll start with the concasse. So we take our petals. They have to be perfect because they're going to break down. And then the peppers. We punch them and then we deep fry them until they start to blister. Then we place them in a bowl, cover with cling film and allow them to cook in their own steam. And when they're cooled, we skin them and then we julienne them. It's that simple. So with the red pepper, we open her. Take away this, remove the seeds. We quarter her and then we remove the ribs, but we don't throw them away. A little tip there. The skins, we peel them but keep them. When possible, do not throw anything away. Because the importance of these skins and those ribs, what we do with them, we put them in the blitzer with a little bit of tomato puree, the skins of the tomatoes and the insides of the tomatoes, a little bit of olive oil and we blitz it. And then we pass it through a very fine chinois and make a fresh passata. And the difference the passata makes to the piperad is extraordinary. Without it, it's not the same. So that little bit of waste, which normally ends in a bin, ends in the piperad. So we take the peppers, and all we do with them is just julienne them. As you can see, just run the knife through them. They don't have to be perfect, because nothing is perfect. When I slice them, they're slightly different. So accept imperfection. And through accepting imperfection, you'll create perfection. So there's our peppers. So, we take the onion, take the core. As you can see, I'm chopping the onion rather finely. No need to look if you know where the blade is. Okay, take a little garlic. We could be professional, take the core out. But I'm a home cook now, not a professional cook. Okay, so now we're ready. The peppers which have been fried, steamed, skinned, sliced. The onion, slicey refined. The garlic, slicey refined. Concassia of tomatoes, thyme, bay leaf. And then we have the fresh passata. So now it's time to make the piperad. Olive oil, onions, garlic. Work them across the base of the pan. Why? So the water evaporates quicker. And by cooking something quick, we retain freshness. We retain that natural sweetness of the onion rather than being boiled in its own juices. I've said many times before to question, to question, to question. Process your thoughts and give yourself the answer, the correct answer. Okay, at the time, add the bay leaf. 
continue to work. As you can see, the water content is gone. And I can also tell by the smell. So now we add the tomato con cassi. And once again, work it across the pan until it evaporates quicker, so you retain freshness. So what you can see now is happening, the tomatoes are releasing their water. They're starting to break down. You've got to take it that little bit further to create that concentrate of fresh tomatoes. So now, just pull your spatula across. Can you see it's starting to bleed out very slowly, so it's almost there, it's sort of 95, 98% there. You just work it. So pull your spatula through, and you can see the water is minimal. It's olive oil, which is seeping out. It's ready. So now we add the red peppers. And add the fresh passage, which we made. There we are. And the working of the peppers, the speed of the cooking, retains that freshness. And that's what it's all about, whether you're making an imam bayoldi, whether you're making a ratatouille, whether you're making a biparad. It's about the speed. It's not about a slow braise, because it all stains and dies. What you want is that freshness. You want those sunshine flavors of Provence. So now we've only got two things left to do. One is to season, and two is to cook it down to the perfect texture. And we season with a little bit of paprika, a little salt. So just work it slowly and allow it to cook down. I've told you about time. Time in the kitchen is only a guideline, but sometimes it's worth investing a bit of time in the right place and not the wrong place. It's like when you make pasta. Why don't I make my own spaghetti? Because I've got the machinery to make it. And secondly, they're more consistent than I am. And life in the kitchen is all about consistency. It's about focus, it's about discipline, it's about punctuality. If you're late, you'll always be late. If you can't focus, you'll be inconsistent. If you can't stay disciplined, you'll deliver inconsistency again. The key to survival in those three-star restaurants is punctuality, discipline, focus, which all equal inconsistency. And that's what three stars is all about, consistency. So keep on working. So you can see now when I pull my spatula through, it's not flooding the same way. Can you see, just slowly oozing out, so I'll go a little bit further. It's almost there. What it needs is just a little bit more seasoning. Not much more, because we have to take into consideration the reduction. It's almost perfect. We're talking seconds away. But it's still wet and moist, but it has texture, it has density, and it's not going to bleed across the plate. You just look. And there we have it, perfection. Now, we must be generous with the oil in the pan, but look at the thickness of the salmon steaks. So it speeds up the cooking. If there's not enough oil in the pan, then what happens is it starts to dry. There we are. Right. In the pan, olive oil. When you go to Spain and you watch them cook fish, they shallow fry it. But look how well they cook fish. Very few people in this world cook fish as well as the Spanish. Season. In with the salmon. Season the top side. So we warm the piperad gently. The last thing we want to do is warm it on an aggressive heat. It sort of dries it. So just gently bring the heat in. Okay. You may ask why I moved the pan. The reason why, the bullseye is always the hottest. It's cooler here. So by moving the pan, the fish cooks evenly. Yeah. 
So let's take our basil, which once again works amazingly well with salmon and piperette. Let's just listen to the pan. Just line them up and then just slice. Don't bruise herbs. Just let the knife do the work. Okay. And look at basil as a salad rather than a herb in this dish. Okay. Okay. In with the pit round. Once again, service is family style. Put an olive oil, lemon juice. Crystal salt. Just dress with the tiniest amount of basil. And there we have it. Salmon with piperad, oil, lemon, little crystal salt, and just a little fresh basil to wash the palate.